A pleasant good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, from the Anoka Fieldhouse, where tonight it is the end of the regular season for boys basketball as the Anoka Tornadoes take on the Rogers Royals in what should be a really interesting matchup inside the Northwest Suburban Conference. Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Anderson, joined alongside Mr. Joe Rulin. Joe, this Rogers team has been really stout this year, 17-8. and eight. They got a lot of interchangeable parts. It's a fun team to watch. Yeah, they started the season winning 10 of the first 11. They dropped four, of course, who hasn't, to Park Center, to Osseo, to Maple Grove, to Tatino Grace. Since then, they started to stack their wins, and it's a team that will probably be the number one seed in their section. And this Anoka team is really fun to watch. They, they score points in bunches. They've got athletes all over the place. But talking to Coach Jesse Jefferson before the game, they feel like they can play with everybody. The question is, can they stop everybody? It is. It comes to that commitment when it comes to defense and then offensively knowing your roles. They come in 11-13, and 13, took a hard loss to Park Center in their last game. But uh, they're looking to get the momentum generated here tonight. It is senior night here at Anoka, and that always changes the lineups, but it should be a fun one tonight. The energy should be really good. Uh, what do you expect to see in this game altogether? I expect to see some trapping. You see a very aggressive Rogers team. They like to minimize those three-point shots, even shots attempt, but mostly the maids. They'll shut down that for a lot of teams. Meanwhile, for Anoka, it's about getting some ball movement and some flow to that offense. Should be a really fun game to watch tonight. We hope for a high-scoring up-and-down affair. We think we'll have it, and we'll have it for you next on QCTV. Back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20-10. Touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, oh, yes. Scores. Yes. Scores. Yes. 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 from that spot down on the floor, Joe, all the way up here to our little cozy broadcast position just above center court. And we are just about ready to go for starting lineups tonight and uh, getting this thing ready to tip off between Rogers and Anoka. Well, you'll see some energy on the floor tonight as both teams try to calibrate their game and get themselves set for postseason play. Of course, uh, it is uh, one game remaining for Anoka versus Coon Rapids tomorrow night. But uh, pretty much that season is set and pretty much those sections in the minds. And after their meeting Saturday, we'll have things going. And you want to be able to kind of implement some changes and modifications that you can use come postseason. Uh, we're going to have lineups pop up on the screen here for you in just a second. But you spoke to Coach Mike Pomeroy before the game. Uh, he's got to be really loving what he's got here. It feels like he's got just tons of different weapons. We talked about that in the pregame of just interchangeable parts, players who can trap, they sub in and out, do a lot of interesting stuff. What did he have to say to you before the game? You know, he's got a little something also called senioritis, in which he's got a lot of seniors out on that court. But you look at that lineup, 6'3", 6'4", 6'2", but they trap so well. They're a team that commits to moving the three-point shooter off that spot and have him dribble at least once. They're committed to that. They're committed to their D, and he just kind of likes the flow of the way things are going and projects really 
he thinks they should be the number one seed in their section. There's their lineup right there. Wagner, Deluge, Kane, Fuller, and Balder. And it just feels like all those guys can score. And they've got guys on the bench who can do just the same. It's a really interesting group. Deluge, obviously, their highest scoring player. Deluge can hit the threes. All of them can contribute in their own way. But 19 points a game for Deluge. 11 for one player who's kind of an X factor, I'll say, coming off that bench is Trayvon Mix, a junior. He had 21 his high versus Centennial. He had 20 versus Andover last week. But they also get Fuller. He's got 11. They've got uh, other players who contribute in You'll be surprised how they can force those turnovers with the trap. It's a lot of positionless basketball as the Tornadoes get ready for their big, bright entrance. We'll get their lineups on the floor here for you as well. It is senior night, so the four seniors are going to get the start, along with Peyton Pagani. We'll give you those names in just a second as it flashes across. Coach Jesse Jefferson in year three, as you take a look, J.R. Hurst, A.J. Housie, nice to have A.J. back as he kind of picked up the team in midseason. Uh, Abdurah Farah and Evan Frecking, those are your four seniors. And then Peyton Padani, the junior, here for Jesse Jefferson. But expect Trey Borchers, expect Trey Ellis, expect those guys off the bench fairly quickly here tonight, I would think, for Coach Jefferson. Hey, you got four guys averaging double digits, and Housie's been alive, averaging 11 points a game since his return. Of course, Frecking is just tremendous and consistent, not only scoring, but getting boards as well. Podani, first time this year I'm gonna get a chance to see him. I enjoy watching him play football and basketball last year in that semifinal section loss to Andover. He was lightning, and I expect to see more of that tonight. And Borchers also hitting those threes, averaging 13 a game. Obviously, keep your eye on A.J. Housie. We haven't seen him a ton here on QCTV this year because we haven't done a lot of Anoka lately. But he is, uh, they mentioned in the pregame and they talked about the seniors, and I think uh, public address announcer Bill Leach had it right, uh, maybe one of the, just the freakish athletes we've ever seen at Anoka High School in recent memory. I mean, this kid is just a creature. He can jump out of the gym. He's uh, just a menace around the basket. Something to keep an eye on with him tonight because athletically, that poses a matchup for Rodgers tonight. Try to figure out. It is, and hey, how savvy can Anoka be with this trap? And can they find their spots on the court where they can easily break it and convert those points into layups? We'll take a look at how this goes tonight indeed. Housie's going to jump at center for the Tornadoes and will jump against, uh, looks like number 13. Take yep, that back. Fuller. Fuller, yep, Jackson Fuller. Tap one, Padani. And there they start to trap right up top. They play man-to-man. -man. Boy, there's the trap right there. And in trouble is Farah. Farah's got to get it to JR. Hurst will nah, tried to feed Frecking, but missed it. But you can see already an example of that, Joe. They go and pressure at the line. They use the timeline to their advantage, and they get the turnover. Yeah, and they'll put some full-court pressure on with that trap as well, just before you cross that uh, midline. Fuller, good feed inside. Kick back out towards Balder. They keep it alive, they move, nice move, nice feed, and once again, Balder gets the nice dish and a lay-in. Beautiful diamond, you saw that ball movement cuts in for the layup, and Balder, his first two of the night. Padani picks up the dribble before crossing, gets it to Housie. AJ trying to turn, but he'll dribble it off his foot, as again, the pressure coming in from the defense of Alex Kane. Two turnovers, two possessions here early for Anoka. You could, I'll tell you that pressure, it reminds me a little of the day with uh, Champlin Park and the Rebels and their midcourt traps. And uh, these guys all, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, just phenomenal defensive commitment for Rodgers. They're speeding up the Tornadoes offensively. Now Kane will drive with the right hand. Stop and pick it up. Now free throw line, Balder. Balder gets it back out quickly and finds Delu, uh, Dalush. Inside they go, Balder again, up over the top, high off the window, no good, rebound, Frecking, and now Padani. Padani will pull up for three, got it. Beautiful three, stop and pop. Padani with his first trifecta of the night. And obviously that's how they want to score there, right, Joe, is get in transition, get a, get a miss, get the other way, get a quick hoop. Now they go back the other way. Kane in the corner, guarded by Farah. Abdurah Farah brings the pressure. Now Frecking will come out and a whistle away from the ball. And is that going to be on JR? JR Hurst under the basket. Yes. JR Hurst called for the push. First team foul for Anoka. And you got it right. So transition ball is so important for Anoka. Under control, stay poised because Rogers makes that ball and you're going to see that trap all game. Fuller. Full court. 
Fuller goes back out to Deluge. Deluge for three off the mark and a rebound by Balder. Balder can't put that one away and a rebound taken by Frecking. Frecking pushes for Padani. Padani will drive. Nowhere to go, but he's going to get mugged by Fuller. And that'll be Fuller's first and Rogers' first. Well, Podandy picked up his first three. Here you get a look at this foul. You can see a hack on the arm that time by Fuller. He's not afraid to uh, play con or physical, and you saw it there. They'll okay. play man-to-man -man and continue it the majority of the game. Will Rogers. I expect both teams to play pretty physical at times here. JR is going to drive. Drive on Wagner. He dribbles it and loses it. Now picked up by Kane. Third turnover by the Tornadoes. And we're moving the other way quickly. Royals. Here's Kane. Got away with a little bit of a walk there. Drives right through. Good defense by JR Hurst. Hurst gets it to Frecking quickly. Now JR's running the floor. Full head of steam. Might be a little too quick. Slows down. Finds Evan Frecking. Frecking goes straight up. JR keeps it alive but can't finish it on the tap. And a rebound by Rogers. Good drill by Frecky, and I thought he had the right timing. Good drive to the basket. Both teams playing a little fast and out of control right now. As that time, Balder and Wagner come in full head of steam. Can't finish, and they'll turn it over. Stoppage of play here. They'll inbound Anoka, but watch the strap. Full court pressure being shown by the Royals. You're right. It speeds up that brain, really. Uh, it, it makes you feel like you got to play faster. You, hey, you want to be poised. 70% of the turnovers in basketball on full court pressure happen after the midcourt line. Trayvon Mix into the game. This is a player you told me to keep an eye on a little bit in the pregame. He is on the floor quickly. Smooth. JR gets it across, guarded by Mix. Hurst makes a move. Looks for Farah. Farah moves quickly to A.J. Housie. Housie at the free throw line, poked by Mix. And Trayvon Mix gets the first steal. Now he's running with a full head of steam. Challenges Frecking. That's going to be an offensive foul on Trayvon Mix. Good job by Evan Frecking as he gets just above the semicircle. And he was planted. Yeah, just above it. Good footwork. Hey, he squared up. Just went straight up. Didn't try to reach. Good poise by Frecking. But you saw the move by Mix, came right into the game, got the pickpocket. That's the fourth turnover for Anoka already here in the first half. But uh, he can certainly maneuver that ball, navigate that body to get shots off. Padani takes the screen from Frecking. Good show by Balder. Inside, though, to Frecking. Good vision from Peyton Padani. And Evan Frecking gets the hoop. It's 5-2 Tornadoes. Beautiful dime by Padani. Finding Frankie, Frecking already in that uh, paint. Good position by Frecking. Good pick and roll right there. Now Balder steps out for three short front rim. Rebound Peyton Padani. Padani will move quickly the other way. Both teams not shy. They're not playing slow. JR, a little pump fake. Who goes straight up over the top. Can he finish? Yes. Good over job. the top got, of Deluge. Yeah. Got the feet set, got poised, and then follow through and executed on a short jumper. Borcher's getting set to come in for the Tornadoes. Inside Balder, nice ball fake. Can't finish, gets his own rebound. And Balder puts that away. Chase Balder with four points, all four for the Royals. Got a two-for-one opportunity there. Put the second one down for two. Three-point lead for Anoka. JR playing the point. He gets poked there by Trayvon Mix, and that's two <laughs> fouls quickly. Well, that was a short visit from that's Trayvon Mix. An easy one to call for the yep. official when your defender extends that arm, and it's right into the chest of the player. You wonder if that initial charge call was still in his head. Very possible with playing a little bit of maybe, and again, another example of maybe too fast here early on, Joe. Yeah, I think, you know, you see it sometimes with the Timberwolves. They make a play, they think, okay, I'm over, I'm going to complain, but they don't. It carries on for at least another three, four minutes, and it really sabotages some of that play, and you wonder if that charge call stuck in the head there of Mix. They go with a little bit of small ball here as Borchers, nice. That's These two guys have such chemistry. Padani to Borchers, and Borchers gets into the game and gets a quick hoop. It's 9-4, foul on the floor here. Let's go to number 13. I think they got a, they want, I mean, Anoka wants a walk. They're not going to get it. Instead, it's going to be on Farah, I believe. Borchers that time attacks the rim, a good finger roll. Off the glass for two. So Farah called for that. Back up we go as it's Adam Broberg into the game. His story is fascinating. But Broberg on the floor for the first time. Just got cleared just a few weeks ago, really. Averaging 10 points a game since his return. Balder, that's going to be off of, uh, I believe, uh, Fuller. 
and a turnover. Yeah, Adam Broberg broke his leg last year in football, came back this year and had a back, a, a broken back, but has fought through it to stay on the floor. I mean, just got cleared to come back. That's just amazing luck, first of all, bad luck, but uh. good credit to him for staying in it and keep fighting. JR driving. Missed there, rebound by Housie, and again, he just out jumps the universe right there to get that one, but he can't finish him or run him with a full head of steam the other way, and Broberg lays it in. Right on cue, a long pass and closing the deal. Broberg, his first two of the game. There's Hurst. See that pressing defense. They're so squared up, Rogers defensively. Definitely waiting for those Tornado players to and pick up trapped. their dribble. Farah. Feeds Hurst. Oh, 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 boy. Boy, that was a it. hit by Broberg into he that front row. Into the head. And they're going to take a timeout quickly. Yes, he hit his head going into the bleachers. Well, he went for a uh, hard steal on J.R. Hurst. He's relentless defensively. But he says he's okay. He went for the, and he's got, and the refs are going to say, you got to go see. And that's the right move. Broberg doesn't like that. But that's absolutely the right call by the official. You're always going to protect the player in that situation. Oh, my gosh. So he has to get checked. I can't believe he just stood right back up again. But, yeah, definitely get him checked. He went for that steal. He's relentless with this. effort. Full head of steam. But, yeah, he definitely took a spill as a result. It's 9-6. Talked about his basketball or football injuries. It's just... Amazing. You can kind of see his hustle always full throttle. Well, you play 120%. That stuff's going to happen occasionally. Back on the floor here. Here's Wagner. Wagner gives it to Fuller. Fuller catch at the elbow. Back up top. Looking for a little help from Kaz Murkowski. Just on the floor. Three ball in and out. So far, the Royals struggling. Yes. And again, Housie didn't chase that down thinking JR maybe had it. But instead, we're going to get a foul on the inside. No, a travel first. Travel first, and I think uh, Jefferson yelling at JR, not really in a, in a very polite way, saying, hey, stay with that. That's yours. Go get that thing next time. Good hustle by Christian Wagner, 6'3", senior for Rogers, who came up with that loose ball, found teammate at the elbow, but uh, whistled for the travel. Trey Borchers brings it across in the hot pink shoes. Padani, very physical there. Nice job by Fuller. Fuller tries to feed Wagner. Beautiful catch by Christian Wagner. And he'll get the lay in. That was pretty stuff from Wagner. Hey, Fuller with the steal and the back shoulder toss. Boy, JR with a beautiful break of the press. And he takes it coast to coast and gets the lay in. Beautiful play from JR Hurst. That was Swiss cheese all the way. Slice and dice and through the holes for two. Kazmierkowski the drive. Count it. One coming for Colton Kazmierkowski, and he will try to level the game at 11. Make sure those seat belts are fastened because this is gonna be a fast ride all night. As you see the conversions, transitions happening at just the right time and completing it. Kazmierkowski on the season, an impressive year, seven points a game, but uh, he's had his high was 22 against Fargo South earlier this year. This is a little bit closer to their traditional starting lineup now on the floor, Joe, as Dre mm. Ellis is into the game, and uh, they bring Afia uh, Beckway into the game as well. Free throw missed. Wagner just throws a shoulder into Afia Beckway. Hustle first to the ball, right? Yep. A good offensive rebound on that missed free throw, and... Anoka had a 7-2 lead and a 9-4 lead early here in this first half. But now Wagner can at least tie it here with one of these two three kills. Yeah, this is not a game for centipede basketball. <laughs> like, this is a fast-paced, you better have, you, you better have the cheetah stuff working tonight, <laughs> not, the, not that. I love to watch fast basketball, but I'm more of a centipede. When I play. The slow, yeah, exactly. You got to play at that pace when you get out there. A oh, back way left his feet, got away with it. And they got to, yeah, they got to get some help back there in the backcourt. Is that was there was more numbers for Rodgers. A oh, back way drives in and will draw contact and go to the line. Mix is back in the game, by the way, for Rodgers with those two fouls. And he might have just picked up his third. Nope, I think they're going to call the block. Yep. Yeah, it's Wagner who's going to pick it up instead, and that's going to put a back way on the line. And 
drops that cannot hit that first. Get a chance here to knot it up with the second free throw. 11.05 to go in this first half. Love the pace of this game. And that's going to miss. And that will miss both. And Abekwe off to a bit of a slow start here. Gets the quick foul and then two missed free throws. But like I said, Anoka's full of athletes. Oh, beautiful backdoor cut. As that's Kazmierkowski once again. Kane was another assist. And they use that point guard in different spots to kind of pivot and move the ball around. Oh, Borchers, that's usually money when he can just catch and shoot. A Beckway, a beautiful feed. Now take that back, Housey. A beautiful feed to a Beckway. And a Beckway puts it away for the basket. 14-13 in favor of Rogers. Great ball movement that time. Good rotation. And that extra pass gave Anoka. Beautiful short cut money. by Wagner. Blocked that time by Housey. Abekwe's got it, but he's in trouble as he's got the boundary working against him as a third defender, but he breaks it and then drives to the basket. No make there. A Housie puts it back. No call inside as there was all kinds of banging around, but Housie cleans up the loose change. Yeah, Kane was right there, took the charge, maybe got a, a portion of that body, but no call on Anoka. Abekwe almost tried to out jump. <laughs> it yes. looked like Kane on that one. Mix in the corner. Oh, what a grab by Peyton Padani. Just ripped it away. And now Padani brings it back for the Tornadoes. 15-14 the lead for Anoka. 9.43 to go first half. Ellis, right-hand dribble. Pops over the top, leaves it short. Rebound by Kane. Quick give to Jackson Fuller, a taller point guard. Again, one of those 6-4 kind of positionless players that Rodgers has. Lost ball there, and that's going to be a poke by a Beckway, but that's loose ball. Yep. And I think that's what Athey's trying to say is like, hey, the ball's up for grabs. How can I be called for that? Yeah, I agree. That time, loose ball. It was popping up and down. Deluge, as you mentioned, he has yet to heat up. He's averaging 19 a game. Fuller at 11. So Deluge comes out. Kane comes out. Wagner comes out. Frecking's back in. Frecking and J.R. Hurst back on the floor. Balder back on the floor with Broberg also after being freshly checked out by the trainer back on the floor as well. Gosh, thank goodness. Good to see him healthy there. Well, that'll, I think just, maybe sometimes just running into the bleachers just <laughs> rattles your cage more than anything. <laughs> oh, God, I thought that was certainly bound to be worse than what it was, but uh, he certainly uh, has overcome his share of injuries. Glad to see he's back into the game. The senior, Adam Broberg, has a season high of 20 this year against Brainerd. Well, good player. Been around, you know, been playing a lot of ball in his lifetime. A gym rat. Dad's on the coaching staff. Been around basketball forever. Oh, what a poke by Trayvon Mix. Dre Ellis asleep at the wheel, and Mix will take it and dunk it. 16-15 as Hurst brings it quickly the other way and he throws it into traffic taken by Kazmierkowski. He'll drive it all the way with the left hand and score. So what you see, a variety of guys who can close on the ball and close on those bunnies and you gave them about a total of 20 seconds and they had two breakaways, one a throwdown and one a left-handed layup. And uh, Coach Jesse Jefferson uh, in the very stylish Jordans, it decides he needs to take a timeout, <laughs> talk it over. And no doubt, I think it's going to, my guess is the purpose of this timeout is to talk about what we're going to do when they make a basket because they can set a press, set the trap when that made basket happens, Joe. They can. And hey, slow it down, get the ball in the right, you got to have it in the right person's hands as well. Any time, these guys can pick it and go to distance as you saw uh, there with Mix. But uh, I saw them last week against Andover, and holding that ball out was just just like holding candy right out there. Bam, it's out of your hands in no time. Quick hands, they convert, and uh, I'll tell you, they want to play at their pace. And uh, thus far, we have the one three-pointer. 
Yeah. And that's what I said was going to be a key. They like to take away that three-point shot. They don't want you to get comfortable beyond the perimeter. And it's kind of a fast game, but it's also inside, which is not something that, you know, the modern game, you see a lot more threes. And I think players like Borchers and Hurst, those guys like to live out there if they can. Yeah, but the Anoka really has done a great job of converting, staying patient. When they've been patient and be able to move the ball, they've been able to convert it down low for some short bunnies. So that will be the formula for them. Stay poised and protect that ball. That's probably a big purpose for that timeout. They set the full court pressure. Now you gotta have press offense here because you're gonna have guys coming from every direction. Borchers gets it across to Hurst. Nice break of that press. Her by JR airballs that one. They got what they wanted. They broke the press, got a look, but they couldn't convert. Great hustle by JR Hurst to get a steal, but now a push out by Broberg in trouble here. Broberg steps out of bounds as he gets the steal from <laughs> Padani. Oh my good, good play. Relentless defense, and again, the one thing Rogers, the Rogers Royals do really well, Joe, is they use the boundaries as those extra defenders. It's almost like they got nine guys on the floor. It's what you always tell in coaching. Hey, use that line, use the sideline, baseline, but these guys do it to perfection. The catch that close to the line sets that up, but now a chance to bring it across quickly here as it's Caleb Shearer on the floor for Anoka that time with Padani. Similar haircuts, hard to tell them apart, 10 and 11. <laughs> Must be nice to have that option. I guess. Padani will feed. Shearer, the feed to Borchers. Trey drives, but he's blocked at the rim. Nice job on defense by Fuller. Mix, full head of steam, but he slides and glides and falls, and he hates it. Now Borchers, a wide receiver by nature. He gets that to the rim. He'll get the foul. I think that's going to go at number 22. For Rodgers, he'll be whistled for that one. Trayvon Mix just found out that he plays on the slipperiest floor <laughs> in the metro area here at Anoka High School. I heard you talking about that with uh, Roberg before the game. Balder picks up his first foul for the 6'4 senior. Hey, the head coach, by the way, for Roger Royals, Mike Pomroy. And He's got an interesting background as he spent time as an assistant coach at the University of South Dakota, the women's team. He was an assistant to the Minnesota Gophers women's basketball coach who they have today. And he said he worked a lot of the video and he realized just how much she prepares for each game and watches those tendencies and puts together a, a real key game plan each time out. And he says, I found that is really a key goal in the coaching is being prepared and, and, and the planning and all. So. It's kind of different from Paul Broberg's assistant. It's like, we just like to show up and play. That's kind of our thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trayvon Mix inside. Nice block that time from Peyton Padani. And a drive from Shearer. Nice feed in the back door. Housie gets pushed on Broberg, Adam Broberg will pick that up as Housie had the baseline. 18-16. You get a look here and it's a chance here really. Inbound here plays how you can convert. They go with the four horns low. Does an Oka on a start. They go back, it's Frecking for three. Evans hard off the back, but that's going to be a great rebound by Housie. As again, he just out jumps the universe, but just not able to finish that up. And a rebound by Padani. He's rejected. Oh. Taken back by Housie, and he puts it away. What an effort. Many opportunities. Rogers kept it alive, thought they had a save. And then Anoka converts it for two. Chance for Fuller at the free throw line, can't knock it down. Caleb Shearer, full head of steam, tries to fire a 90 mile an hour fastball to Housie, but it was picked off and knocked out of bounds. Yeah, getting the hand was Deluge. Deluge. Deluge averaging 19 a game coming in so far, held scoreless for the first 11 minutes. And last week when I saw him, had kind of a slow start and then really got it going in the second half. So, see if he can replicate that. Anoka hopes not. Padani gets it to Housie on the inbound. Now back up Caleb Shearer. Shearer trying to do a little and one mixtape to her from the three point line. Now he'll turn around and fade it and knock it down with the soft hands. Back to a two point lead now for Anoka. They've led by as many as five a couple of times here in the first half. 
6.40 to go here as we keep it going. Christian Wagner gives it to Deluge for three. Hard off the heel. And a rebound taken this time by Shearer. Shearer had it poked back away by Fuller. Now Broberg in amongst the trees. Gets back to Balder. Turnaround shot through the traffic. No call. Finally a whistle. As there is bodies <laughs> flying everywhere. See, so many times to be defense is a choice, right? Offensive rebound and rebound as a whole is also. It reminds me of Bobby Jackson with the Minnesota Gophers and also a sack. He, 5'10", the guy could rebound because he was committed. It's an attitude. And on that offensive possession, I'll tell you, Rodgers just kept feeding, getting after that board. Frecking called for that foul. Both teams at six team fouls. First missed free throw there for Jackson Fuller. Kaz Murkowski back onto the floor for Rodgers. It's a fun name to say. And oh, by the way, the Andover Huskies in their section final have taken a 1 0 lead. Co. How exciting is on that? On the goal, section finals, and Duluth taking on Grand Rapids. Shearer gets it across, lost it. Picked up by Wagner. Wagner's got numbers, feeds Fuller, and Fuller gets it through. And a technical foul is called on A.J. Housie for slapping the backboard. I think it was in which the conviction that he did it so hard. But I think he was just going for the block, right? I think. But uh, maybe they felt it was a bit overzealous. Maybe so. But I guess I'm, I mean, I'm, Coach Jefferson's oh, not making a big case for it or anything. But Borchers is at the line. Oh, so they called it on, did oh, they call it on Rodgers? Oh, they must have called it on Rodgers. I thought he pointed directly at A.J. Housie. As did I. So they must have heard something or something from Rodgers. And we're tied at 21. I guess I didn't hear who they got that on then. By the way, updates coming from Pete Anderson, who was with you last night he here. Was, yeah. He's in Duluth tonight, providing me some text updates. No doubt not camp. wearing a hat. Yeah, you know, he's a regular hair farmer. Now, yeah, he's not going to wear a hat in that. And of course, Mike Pomeroy now is maybe trying to get explanation on the tech as well. Yes. Still talking about it. It just looked like the ref pointed at A.J. Housie. And that was the only thing I could think of. I totally, I guess I did not see it. The drive there. Nice floater from the corner. And there's Deluge on the board. So back to a two-point lead here for Rodgers. Here's a drive by Housie. Works right through the traffic and scores. Wow. A.J. Housie wasn't going to be denied that time. Good job. He used that contact to kind of balance him. 23 apiece. Wagner for three. Again, off the mark. We're fighting for all the loose balls. Back out to Luge for three. Got it. Starting to dial it in now. It's a deluge for Deluge. It is. He's got a nickel. Five here in the first half. The answer from Padani. Nope, short, freaking good hustle, but he can't hang on to it. And it's going to be Rogers basketball. Well, I think sometimes it's hard to realize when you're watching. But boy, they upped that heart rate. I can tell my diastolic number is probably over Are you okay right now? Yeah, right what's now. my Fitbit say? Just being just feet away from the tempo and the speed of this game. And it's tough to get yourself mentally and, you know, emotionally set for some of these shots without rushing it, without a shooting it flat. Deluge tried to drive on Padani. Gets it back up. It's Kaz Murkowski guarded by Farah, who's back on the floor. Dre Ellis back on the floor as well. Wagner. Trying to work it to Deluge, guarded by Padani. Going to take the screen from Balder. Nice screen and roll. Beautiful basketball from Rodgers. Uh, averaging 71 points a game. Rodgers 17 and 8 right now with a five point lead. 4.30 to go here in this first half. Trey Ellis downtown. Got it. Second three of the game. That one was pure kind of big one. shred of the net. Beautiful. I kind of had to have it. Dre Ellis caught it in rhythm, knocked it down. First hoop of the night for Ellis. Wagner for the answer. No good. Hard off the backboard. Rebound to go the other way. It's Padani. Padani, left hand in the paint. Gets hit. Count it. One coming for the quarterback. 
knots it up at 28 and what persistence gets the end one opportunity makes this free throw it gives anoka the one point lead and podani good persistence love that work the and one opportunity Boy, just when you feel like one team is kind of finding some mojo joe back oh. here comes here comes the other team with an answer it's like the stock exchange correction right it goes up, it comes down, it makes, it corrects. Well, your portfolio is way better than mine. I can't <laughs> speak to those kinds of things. Well, Danny averaging 18 a game. He's been starting to heat it up here late in this first half. Boy, the balance is there for Rodgers. You look at their scoring, they've got six guys in the scoring column. Seven, I take that back. I mean, a lot of guys contributing. 28-28, his missed free throws are kind of becoming a thing. Good poise. Got it inside. I thought he might hit back of the rim. But alter that shot and a walk. Yeah, Wagner knocks that one down. He's got six and a quick turnover by the Tornadoes. Right now I have seven turnovers here in the first half for Anoka. And JR is going to come in. JR Hurst back in. Abdurah Farah will sit. Kind of an athletic lineup on the floor. Both teams really, but yeah. Housie, when you get Housie and Hurst, and Padani and Borchers on the floor. It's a very athletic group for Anoka. Dre Ellis, too, will not be outdone, even though he's a little smaller. That time almost had the rebound, but had it poked away. Good ball fake that time by Deluge, but can't finish, and a rebound by J.R. Hurst. Hurst, full head of steam, lost the ball for a minute, got it back. It's Ellis. Ellis thought about the free throw line, couldn't take it. Now J.R., little razzle-dazzle, gets it back between the circles to Ellis. Ellis back to Padani. Finds Hurst again. JR looks for help and gets it from AJ Housie, who goes one on one, but he slips and falls and he travels. Hey, the slippery floor back again. See that? It's like the rug getting pulled out. Hey, I'd mentioned Rogers started the season winning their first four, took a loss to Buffalo, then went on and won their next five, winning nine of the first ten. Mm -hmm. Impressive. But then recently they had lost four. February has not been a friend. For Rodgers, at least to start, they had a four-game skid, but who wouldn't? Yeah. I'll tell you more. But Annie on the steal. No numbers, but a little spin move by Peyton. He can't finish it. Rebound, Dre Ellis couldn't finish the bunny. It's still up for grabs and finally taken by Trayvon Mix. And now they've got three on one. It's Kazmierkowski who's going to get the lay-in as J.R. Hurst decided not to foul, let him have it. Hey, a dish quicker than a hiccup that time from Mix and converted. Rodgers back up by four. Ellis will drive, take it straight up over the top, but it can't finish that. Housie almost fouled, got away with it. Now a foul called. Is it on Borchers or is it on Housie? So I'd mentioned they had lost Rodgers four in a row to start the month of February, but those losses came to the likes of Osseo, Park Center, Tatino Grace. Tatino Grace, number one in class 3A, and then also uh, Spring Lake Park. And then most recently, the Tornadoes, also. And right now they're in the midst of a four-game losing streak. Their last game was a loss to a Park Center as well. The Park schedule, Center, a team it, it, to reckon. There's a lot of tough matchups in this conference, as you, you've talked about. A lot of good teams. There's not a lot of, lot of easy wins. JR runs the floor nicely. Good pass by Padani. And Hurst gets it. Gets the call. Gets one more coming. And a chance again come the Tornadoes. Boy, that time. He got a lead and he jetted out there was Hurst and he beat Kane down the court. Alex we, Kane. We talked about the balance of the Royals scoring. Eight players now have scored for the Tornadoes. Hurst has six, which is tied for the lead. And he short arms that free throw. Boy, a lot of missed free throws from the Tornadoes here in this first half. Got to get cleaned up a little bit. Free throw percentage right now is what my mom used to call trailer park pretty. <laughs> Yahtzee. Rebound by Dre Ellis. Ellis will take it the other way. Three ball coming. No good right there. Air ball from Hurst. Hurst likes those three-point shots, too. He just caught that one maybe a little too quickly. And a drive by Kazmierkowski. Nice feed there. Nope, can't hang on. Ellis will take it away. Nice behind the back by Dre. He's going to drive and dish. And JR finishes it. Good hands and a good vision. A dime to some great hands, good mitts, and closing it up Anoka. Boy, they that, knotted it up at 32. That was about as pretty a dime from Dre Ellis as you're going to get. That was so good. And a nice catch and finish by Hurst. 
back and forth game. Been a lot of fun so far. Kane drives amongst the trees. Housie's got to settle down a little bit, staring at the ref after every call. He looks like Carl Anthony Towns right now. <laughs> well, Kane, smallest guy on the court, made a couple of fakes, took it to the lane, tried a reverse layup, had it blocked, but they whistled the foul. Kane. Kane's such a, a pivotal player. If you watch him, he's in the low post. He's the shortest guy out there, but they use him because he's such an excellent passer, and he has just a great view of the court. Kane's first point of the night, so there's their eighth scorer of the evening as he gets in, and you're right. You know, he's been doing a lot of, it seems like, the dirty work, and that and time looking for his own shot on that possession. Yep, yeah, he did, and he'll get, the, he'll get those offensive rebounds off of a hard bounce. He can't convert either of those. So it's a one-point lead as he gets one out of two. That's right. A Beckway back on the floor, and that's just it. Tornadoes have hung tough without Afi Beckway being a big part of the offense. Borchers, three ball, no offensive foul. Loose ball foul away from the ball after the pass. That happens often when you leave your feet like that to pass. And you know what? They're lined up. Again, They defensively, Rodgers squared up, and that time they square up to take that charge with 1.10 to go. And that... Just the first foul on Podani. Nine team fouls for both teams. A yeah, very interesting first half with a minute 10 to go. It's 33-32 Royals in what has been a real nice back and forth matchup here so far. We expected a close game so far. We've gotten it. The drive by Deluge. High off the window, but he can't finish. Abekwe grabs the rebound, looks ahead. Abekwe cross court. Nice poke away by Kazmierkowski as he knocks it out of bounds. You know, they're just hustling back, Rodgers, all the time. Get a finger on it, anything on it. They feel like, you know, it's kind of that uh, responsibility to Co hustle back and D up. Refs talking to Coach Pomeroy and Coach Jefferson. Coach Pomeroy uh, looking a bit on the exasperated side <laughs> with this referee. Still shaking his head. <laughs> the body language is awesome. Three ball from Padani. His second third of the game for Anoka, a team that has put up 169. They've made 169 three-pointers on the season, just three this far tonight. Two-point lead for the Tornadoes, 35 to go first half. Here comes Mix. Mix, back door. Here comes Kazmierkowski. That should be a held ball, and it is. Held ball will stay with Rodgers, but a nice job by Afia Bekwe to draw that held ball. Oh, a Beckway got over there to cover it, moved off of his player, saw that pass coming, got the tie up. Good hustle, but the ball will now go back to Rodgers. Kazmierkowski up the inbound, guarded by a Beckway. Up top, Deluge, guarded by Borchers. Borchers steps up towards the half court line, pushes Deluge back, looking at one on one, perhaps a little isolation ball, but he's got five to shoot. Takes the screen from Kane. Kane's got to fire. Somebody's got to shoot. They get it off. Oh, good follow up there, but can't finish. Broberg was right there. Last shot time. Three seconds. Two seconds. Padani can't get it off. And it's going to be out of bounds with .2 to go. And what it is, it's a hustle back and getting a hand on it to break it up. Yeah, great job by Trayvon Mix. This is going to have to be a quick touch, uh, touch shot here, basically. 35-33, the Tornadoes look to go to the half with the lead, maybe even steal one more if they can. Nope, did not get it off. And that is halftime. A really entertaining half, Joe. Both teams really getting after it. 35-33, Anoka, your thoughts? Hey, five-point lead early on in the gate for Anoka. 7-2, the 9-4. Rogers closes the gap. They take a 4-5 point lead. Anoka counters, and now here, just before is that half. They have a two-point lead. Does Anoka 35-33. I love the tempo of this game. Super fun. Going to be a fun second half. We hope you stick with us here on QC TV. Hi, my name is Darren Berger. I'm the Executive Director with the City of Anoka Housing and Redevelopment Authority. This is our third year that the Board has chosen to fund a Curb Appeal Residential Enhancement uh, Grant Program, or the CARE Grant Program. We are funding, again, up to $100,000. Each loan is a $5,000 maximum, $1,000 minimum. 
Um, it is targeting um, home improvement projects that are visible from the curb. So street view of um, your home. If there's an improvement that you'd like to focus on, our grants range from 25% of the project cost to 15%. 25% is our beautification grant, we call it, and that would be things like a driveway, a new front door, new garage door, permanent landscaping, things of that nature. And the 15%, um, as we call the basic grant projects, uh, those would be roofing, siding, those types of uh, uh, larger projects that uh, might not be as focused on the curb appeal side of it. So over the last two years, the HRA has funded roughly almost 50 um, projects and for different homeowners here in Anoka. And the total investment is probably in the $800,000 range in uh, just projects in general. Um, and the HRA investment is roughly $160,000. So, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a good tool for folks that maybe might not have all the money to cover a project or who are looking to do maybe more above and beyond that and wanted to start with these projects and maybe use the grant portion that they get back to fund additional home improvement projects. Applications are actually now live on our website and it's a quick application. You would go onto the City of Anoka HRA website um, and then look for the CARE grant program tab and within that is the a link to the application. Uh, applications started January 1st and they end February 29th and on March 1st this year, it's a Friday, um, at 3 o'clock I will be um, pulling uh, 25 or 30 names initially and then I'll be adding another um, probably 30 or 40 to a waiting list. I'm still working on that. Um, but we are holding the lottery that day and then I'll be notifying folks if they've been chosen or not. Um, hopefully by the end of the day that day, but it might be the following Monday. Uh, if you're not chosen one year, I would encourage anyone to apply for the next year. And um, good luck. Hopefully you're able to be chosen. My name is Jess. Um, I own Muddy Paws Doggy Daycare here in Andover. So we do overnight boarding and um, daycare, and then we also do some light grooming, just baths, nail trims, that kind of stuff. Um, all of the dogs that board with us get to spend their entire day in daycare. They're not kenneled throughout the day. Um, we give breaks and naps and stuff as needed, but for the most part, everybody hangs out in our play area all day long. And then we also, with our daycare program, um, owners can drop their dogs off and pick them up um, later in the day, you know, if they have, are working or have a busy day or, you know, whatever's going on, they just need a break from their dog if they're working from home, which happens sometimes. So yeah, so we just, they, they hang out, they play. We have a large indoor area, large outdoor area. They're supervised 100% of the time while they're in play, play time. Um, and they just get a lot of exercise and socialization. And yeah. I think one of my favorite part about the dogs is when we have a dog that comes in that at first is kind of shy and reserved and not sure of herself or himself and then you know after a short time or a couple days of daycare they come out of their shell and they find a friend and they just like it, it, they just become this super happy you know they're t they come in and their tails wagging versus being a little nervous so that's definitely my favorite part is just I get really excited when when they when they make that 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 leap into playing and making friends and things like that I live in Andover. Um, I have four daughters and they all attend Andover schools. Um, and so when I was looking to add a second location, I really, really wanted to, to go to, stick with Andover. Um, it's a growing community. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of kids and families and usually with kids and families comes dogs. Um, you know, you, you drive anywhere or walk anywhere, there's always people out walking their dogs. And I just felt like it was just something that the Andover community needed. I have an absolutely amazing staff. I work really hard to find um, people that share the same passion with the dogs as I do. And they just, they truly do an amazing job. And I can assure you that they take very, very good care of each and every dog that is here because they do feel so, so warmly about all of the dogs that are, do come in. It's just a really great community um, full of lots of great people. And I love being able to 
you know, go to the gym or go to a, an event or a sporting event or just even Walmart, Target, you know, restaurants and I see people who I take care of their dogs. So it's just so much fun to have that link to where we live plus having a business here. Um, it just makes it, pulls it all together and I mean I'm constantly like meeting people that I know and then they, they bring their dog here and they're like, oh my gosh, you own this place? It's like, oh yeah, yeah. So it's just a fun connection between the community I live in and um, you know, families and their pets and things like that. Decided to play with this kid right here. It's my favorite one, Beast number nine. You'll see him this year, he's a stud. Just decided to make more memories with the boys, you know. It's our last season, so gotta make the most of it. For me, I want to stay focused and uh, keep going, driving through each game, um, and actually get my first goal this year. So I'm um, looking forward to that. You know, I feel I feel pretty good about us. We had a good summer, uh, coming off a couple big scrimmages, played pretty well. So I'm feeling confident about the year. You know, I think our coach is pretty good at getting us all together. We practice a lot together, but I think that just being around the boys in the locker room is the biggest part. I, I think that our practices have been upbeat. Uh, I like the tempo of things. The guys are excited, and that's been our biggest thing is trying to trying to pump a little excitement back into stuff. Have guys looking forward to coming to the rink. Uh, practice shouldn't be drudgery. Games should be a big deal. And we just, we want the guys to be excited about playing hockey. And so far, they've definitely lived up to that. Our, our goals are just to continue to build on um, what we started last year. We, we had a lot of, lot of young and experienced guys that jumped into some roles last year. Uh, we, we rotated two sophomore goalies. I think that's a, a big thing we have coming back is we're pretty excited about our goalie tandem. And I think that we got the car out of the garage on, on uh, you know, getting some experience with these guys last year. And we just want to continue to build on that. And I, and I think that we had a great summer. We had a good fall leading up to it. No, we're not going to come out here making goals to beat the world. We just want to put more in the left column than the right column right now, you know? This program is brought to you by QCTV serving the communities of Andover, Anoka, Champlin, and Ramsey. Bringing you year-round live sports coverage, community shows, and government programming. Tune in each week for new local stories, sports, and information in your city to stay up to date with your community. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Quad Cities TV and on X and YouTube at QCTV to stay up to date with your city and to never miss our live shows. Welcome back, everybody, on QCTV. Tim Anderson, Mr. Joe Ruland here with you. 35-33 at the half. Tornadoes and the Rogers Royals, and what an exciting first half it was. Let's take a look at your first half highlights. It's almost felt like anything you can do, I can do better. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Back and forth. And here's a strip, another turnover. I had Anoka for eight turnovers in that first half, and Rogers converted that one for two. Well, you weren't kidding about the half-court trap. The Tornadoes have had to make some things happen differently with Padani on the outside shot. That made a difference, but you could see the pressure was relentless. Trayvon mixed the steal and the dunk right there for the Rogers Royals. And it was just a back-and-forth game. Anoka could get a lead. Rogers get a lead. Anoka could get the lead back. Rogers get a lead as J.R. Hurst took it coast-to-coast coast right there. J.R. led the team with eight points in the first half. And you see A.J. Housie making a big play right there. I'm impressed with how well Anoka has been attacking the rim. They haven't tried to alter their shots so much or avoid the block. They just have been attacking it. When they do that, they close it up, and that's how I think you need to beat this uh, Rogers squad. Rogers started the February month of February losing their first four, but now trying to close up their season in the month of February, winning their last three. Second half underway as the Tornadoes will start first. Borchers, the drive. Can't finish at the rim. Rebound by Housie. Nope, taken away from him. And now here comes a full head of steam for Fuller, and Fuller will lay it in. Nice job by Jackson Fuller to start the second half, similar to how he started the beginning of this game. Yep, had three in the first half, now two here in the second. Tied up 35. 
Hurst led the team with Padani. Both guys had eight points in the first half. Padani uses the left hand. Nice little move. Oh, what a move by Peyton and Padani. And he'll get the call in one coming. Count the hoop. Beautiful move there by Peyton Padani. And Padani with eight of his own. Now in double figures and gets the chance for the end one. They had a clear out set that time for Podani. They're going to give that on Fuller. Fuller's going to pick up his third. And Podani makes good on the three-point play. One thing to watch will be free throws here in the second half as the Tornadoes kind of struggled at the stripe in the first half. Well, you know what? When you're getting pressured and, and that tempo that uh, Rogers sets, it gets you time. You think you could relax at the free throw line, but it gets you that tempo. It's tough to slow the brain down. That's true. Fuller for three, no good. And that's one thing. They've struggled from the outside to have the Royals tonight. Haven't made those threes, and boy, slipping in those shoes tonight is A.J. Housie. That's the second time that his legs went out from underneath him. Get that sticky mat out again. You gotta yeah, just a, sit on those a for a minute. Of there. Wagner that time was cutting underneath and the ball just happened to fall to him on the bounce while he was standing out of bounds for Rogers. And now Padani will throw a nice cut by Dre Ellis. And Ellis will be fouled and he'll go to the line. You could tell they, they were looking for that mismatch and they had it both from a height standpoint, but it had to be a quick burst of speed to get that opening and, and that's exactly what transpired Alex Kane picks up his first foul here's Dre Ellis to the line and there's the first one good there Ellis with four points he had a three ball in the first half and then obviously those are his first here of the second half 39 35 the lead second good as well okay they got the free throws early on maybe well before that heart rate starts yeah, I was to gonna say, keep the heart rate under 80 and maybe we'll make <laughs> some more free throws little drive by fuller and jackson fuller gets the lane that time the switch didn't look like it got called out defensively and fuller had a wide open look to the basket and it's 40 37 that's going to be a backcourt maybe yep it is yeah backcourt violation padani thought he got it back over but i think that's a good call by the refs yeah the ball had already gone over midcourt, so when he made contact with it, he was over and back, not as though he gets that step to save it. We take another look at it. As you can see, the ball kind of, yeah, it's close. I mean, that's close. I thought it was the right call from there, but I think in replay, it's a little closer. Oh, nice steal by JR. JR wants to get a full head of steam, but he'll lay it in instead. Hurst to double figures. He's the first one there tonight. He's got 10. I take that back. Padani has 11 after that three point play. Little steal and score that time for Anoka. There's Balder who was involved early. Wonder if they can get him more involved here. Wagner will drive. And again, that defense collapsing by the tornadoes. That's knocked out of bounds, and that's gonna be that should be Anoka basketball. Oh man. And Jesse Jefferson's like, are you kidding me? That really should be Anoka basketball. <laughs> we'll Take another look. look at this. Yeah, that's clearly Ooh. off the Rogers Royals. <laughs> And Balder can't knock it down. Rebound by Padani. Boy, for a guard, he's in there getting rebounds, Joe. He is. Anywhere. Anywhere on this court, he's involved. Padani runs point. Bigger point guard. A tough matchup for people. Good feed to Housie. Back outside Padani. Padani guarded by Kane. That's a good matchup as Borchers with a nice cut, and he'll put it away. That was a good look, a good view, and a good dime by Podan. He kept that dribble alive. Big screen by Chase Balder. Deluge tries to get back, finds Balder again. Fuller, drive and kick. Kane for three, missed. And again, the outside shooting a little cold for Rodgers. That it is, and that is what they usually present or create for opposing teams. Now they'll slow it down, will the Tornadoes, as they try to find something offensively. Housie shows screen. Good switch there. They stayed with it, and that's going to get kicked off the foot of Dre Ellis. Nice job of running by Jackson Fuller in an easy layup. Oh, another pickoff, another steal, and a turnover for Anoka, and a great bounce pass. At that point, Anoka had their biggest lead of the game at seven. Not sure what JR was trying to do there. JR is trying to run one on four, but he'll get away with it because Balder's laying on the end line. <laughs> But you see this oh play, JR's yes. running with a full head yep. of steam into, into nothing but white shirts. Caleb Shearer oh. back on the floor for the Tornadoes. Padani sits. I thought Caleb Shearer gave him some nice minutes in the first half, Yeah, Joe. absolutely, he did. Came in, didn't miss a beat, picked up a bucket. 
So now we'll see if they can maybe hit a three for Anoka and get their largest lead of the game. Right now they're at five. Shearer trying to break down the defense. Takes it all the way himself here. Now he's got to find a cutter, and he does. Borchers, but can't finish. As it looked like it got tipped out of his hands. Didn't quite get the handle on it. Back come the Royals. Down by five. When, uh, Fuller, who's been the hot hand, again, can't knock it down from the outside. Ice cold from the outside are the Royals. Still down just by five, though. Pressure. A strong defender. You're seeing from Wagner. Shearer looking for, oh, now take that back. Hurst looks for a clear out. Puts a crossover. Inside feed, Housie goes straight up and scores. Nice job by J.R. Hurst finding A.J. Housie. A.J.'s got eight. Back to a seven-point lead, but that's what I'm talking about. Strong to the rim. That's what Anoka has to continue doing. Wagner, the catch up top. Now big three ball once again to Luge, and that again is off the mark. Rebound Wagner. Wagner goes straight up with it. That's going to be off. Good fight by Dre Ellis, but instead it's Kazmer Koski who wins that battle, and he puts it away. He's up to double digits. Yeah, 10-8 in the first half for him, and now... Cash in on the rebound. Dre Ellis the drive and the score. Slice and dice some more. Love that motion. Ellis shows no fear as he drives to the paint. Seven point lead still for the Tornadoes at 48-41. Deluge trying to break through, gets it. That's a big basket for Blake Deluge. He's got eight. He's got to be thinking even a broken clock is right twice a day. I'm going to just keep firing these. That time just shredded the net. Well, shoot or shoot as we know. <laughs> Shearer gets inside. Nice backdoor cut for A.J. Housie. I love the baseline movement. And a rebound as Dre Ellis, the tip to Borchers, tried to run the floor and can't get it to Hurst. Nice job by Deluge getting back on defense for Rodgers. Fuller for three. Got it. 50-47. Starting to dial it up from the perimeter. Two threes back to back now. And back to within three, Rodgers. Ellis trying to move off Wagner. Back to Hurst. Good cut by Dre Ellis, but a nice job by Christian Wagner getting in the way and knocking that out of bounds. Both teams going back to the bench as it's Broberg and Mix on the floor for Rodgers and Padani back on the floor for Anoka. Tim, I love play on that baseline. And coming off the baseline. And, and Howie, excuse me, Howsey converted last time and the play before. People forget about you sometimes when you're on that base baseline, and uh, his teammates have been able to get him on the cut. Padani with the drive goes and spin cycles the defense of Rodgers and gets a basket. Beautiful spinner. He's, he's scoring from all levels here tonight. 52-47, Tornadoes up by five. Kazmierkowski, pressure by Shearer. Borchers comes out on mix. Mix back up top, Broberg. Little shimmy shake. Now Balder has it. Rogers trying to work the perimeter. Deluge had it. Now has it again, guarded by Ellis. Eight to shoot. Broberg gets it away from Borchers. Fires a three, no good. Rebound, Dre Ellis is moving. Ellis up top, can't knock that down as he goes with the offhand. Borchers keeps it. He'll drive, he'll score. Well, that was a matter of a couple of the Rodgers players colliding on the rebound and getting there and great hustle sticking with it that time was Borchers who lays it in. Drive hard by Mix and he'll be fouled, I think, by Borchers as players are sprawling all over the place. Mix, I always said, could be that X factor. And uh, he's got to start heating it up. He certainly has those capabilities. He's put up some big numbers, 21, 19, 20 on the season in terms of points, averaging 11 on the season. Player who's been a key factor has been Kazmir Kowski. He's got 10, averaging 7 on the year. Mix gets that one. Mix tonight, three points. Big quiet. That foul was official on Caleb Shearer for those scoring at home, playing the home version of tonight's game. <laughs> Mark that up. First foul on number 11, which means you could be dyslexic and still get that right. <laughs> what happened? Lane violation Lane on Rodgers. violation, yeah. Go, go, go. 
Andover Huskies have just gone up 2-0. 33 seconds into the second, Cogswell. Thank you. The hair bear, or shall we say the best hair in Amsoil, Pete Anderson. I think Amsoil's in his hair. That's the question. <laughs> That's a good update there. Thanks for Pete Anderson, who's over at Amsoil Arena tonight, taking in that section hockey game. 54-48 here at the Fieldhouse in A-Town. Broberg's got it up top. Deluge finds Mix, guarded by Padani. And again, the offense needs to move a little bit more here for Rogers, looking a little bit stagnant. Deluge looks for Broberg on the high post. Trying to turn through Shearer and does, but can't finish. It's up for grabs. Mix grabs the loose ball. Deluge trying to work off of Padani. But Danny doing a great job of not allowing Deluge to get those shots off from behind the perimeter. Oh, barreling his head in to Trey Borchers. <laughs> he got him up in the air and he did. It was almost like a headbutt to his abs. Yeah. That sounds kind of strange. You said abs, right? <laughs> That's correct. I wanted to make sure you got that right. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, kind of in the popcorn machine that time <laughs> was Borchers as he was up and down all over the place, and Kazmierkowski just goes ahead and barrels in, draws the contact, and gets the foul. Tim, if you're in Oka, you've got to be just realizing the level of play that you can play at, because they played earlier this year, these two teams, and it was uh, a 97-75 win for Rodgers. This game looks nothing like that first game. And uh, to be able to kind of build that swag and that confidence as Good you're heading here. Good defensive intensity points. tonight too, right? Yes, yes. Committed for a good defensive stop. And they've shut down those turnovers that they had in the first half. Both free throws are uh, made that time for Kaz Murkowski, And he continues his nice night, 12 points. But Danny leads all scorers with 13. And do we get a timeout? 30-second timeout for Coach Jesse Jefferson and the Anoka Tornadoes. You know, it's interesting too, because we talked about this a little bit with Coach Jefferson before the game. And, you know, one thing I like about Coach Jefferson is he is not short on confidence. It doesn't matter if they're 11 <laughs> and 13. He believes that they can win every game, that yeah. they have talent enough to win every game, and that they are going into every game never conceding. Doesn't matter what happened before. And I kind of like that sort of 10 second memory a little bit that he possesses that he's trying to instill in his team. Well, you know what, you build confidence through failure, right? They always say adversity is, is the greatest element in, in success. And you gotta try those things. You've gotta get out, but you gotta have a coach who's not gonna be screaming at you when you try that. And we understand there could be some failure, but you'll learn from it next time. And that's where the confidence comes in, is, is you're able to adjust and uh, start to play at a higher level. And you're seeing that here tonight, even against Park Center, even though they took the loss, they had uh, Housie with 17 points, 12 rebounds. Podani with 16 points, Ellis with 13. So they're getting some good balanced scoring. And tonight, a great demonstration of that. Blocked right there in the corner as Dre Ellis tried to find his shot, but that one was swatted away. So the half, yep. Yeah. So Anoka here, I really think, value some of these possessions, come back with some points on these possessions. Shearer comes out, gets that inbound, takes it up top 15 to shoot. Ellis. They work the ball around. Dre Ellis is looking for an opportunity here with Padani. Working the two-man game. Now Ellis in the corner. He'll drive. He's got five to shoot. Now four to shoot. Shearer's got to get it up. Frecking has this one lost, and they can't get it off. It's a shot clock violation. That pass distributed to Frecking by Fuller. Fuller, just good hands. I saw him last week again. Strip the ball, disrupts it enough, and he couldn't get the shot off. His time expired on the shot clock. Good, First time tonight. Good defense by Rodgers as they get the turnover on the shot clock violation. Now Fuller, who's been really all over the place here for Rodgers in this second half, not able to finish that time in a rebound by Padani. And Shearer and Padani, identical twins, I swear to you, even though they're from two <laughs> different families. Padani's going to look for three from way downtown. No, not good. Rebound taken, though, inside. And no on the bunny. Couldn't knock it down. An opportunity missed that time from Brody Lackanen. First time calling his name on the floor. Could not finish that. Hard off the rim there on the three attempt. Stone from behind and oh my. Foul called first. Pickpocket was Padani. And they are gonna call it, I think a quick one there. And again, Mike Pomeroy is all just wondering what is going on here. <laughs> 
Watch this. Uh, oh, we had a quick one. We lost it there. But it is. That's, that's Mike in the truck uh, just trying to keep you honest. He that's says, right. you know what? I'm not going to give you a replay this time. That's right. Mark was just teasing me on that one. But I will say that it's an art form how Rodgers can pick pocket. Quick hands. Did they just, Third I wonder foul. if they just, did they? No, they didn't. I was going to say, they didn't tee up. I thought they were ready to tee up uh, Mike Pomeroy, which I didn't think that was going to happen. But they give the possession arrow to Anoka. And Here the comes foul Ellis. on Wagner. Yep, foul on Wagner. Shearer guarded by Mix. Good move there by Caleb Shearer. Oh, look out, Afi Abekwe. Abekwe back up top. It's Padani. Oh, no, that's throwing into the traffic. He can't do that. Wagner running. Fuller gets the call, gets the contact. Ellis, yes, absolutely. Dre Ellis, you... Ellis did commit that foul. I know Dre doesn't like it, but that's a good call by the official. They got it. You can see the elbow to the head there. Yep, I think that was the right call. And Fuller's going to get Fuller's going to get that call when he gets inside the semicircle. That's going to happen all day. And that's something that Dre Ellis and, and rest of the Tornadoes really have to learn, both teams really, because they've been looking at the refs with those shots. But when you catch it that deep in the paint, Joe, yeah. I mean, you're going to get the offensive guy's going to get the call nine times out of ten. And when you reach, not straight up, but out, you're going to draw some contact or something that looks like contact, which creates that whistle. So it's Fuller to the line. Fuller with uh, 12 for the game, tied with Kazmierkowski for the team lead and cannot convert on the first. I don't know if we thought that going into this game, Joe. I mean, no. yes, they had balanced scoring, but these two guys have stepped forward and have really been the leaders as we kind of wait for a Deluge to get going and we wait for a, a Christian Wagner to kind of find their way here a bit. Or even Mix to yeah. get something going. But that uh, just bodes well for the strength and the depth of this Rogers squad who came in 17 and 8. It's been a fascinating, very balanced game. On the same side for Anoka, Abekwe hasn't scored yet. Ellis from way downtown can't knock it down. Rebound Borchers as he stays with it and puts it back. That was a strong offensive board. Impressive, impressive close for Anoka. 56-51, Tornado's back up by five. They're not allowing Rodgers to kind of make that long run. Nice backdoor cut by Kaz Murkowski, and he'll put it away. 14 for the junior. Good, that was a feisty cut. Burst and good feed. Quebecway again looking for his first points of the night. Takes it all the way in and scores. Right on cue is Afi Quebecway. Take that back. He's got four tonight. Wagner for the quick answer. Yes! Christian Wagner with a big three ball. And it's 58-56 and we're again back Start, to a tight game. Starting to make that move is uh, Rogers. They've trailed by as many as seven here in the second half. Looking for a game in the 70s here tonight. We're definitely on pace for that. Ellis up top. Good defense being shown by Rodgers. And Padani wants a deep three ball. And he holds it up there like a dish rag for good measure. <laughs> His third trifecta. Connor. And an answer the other way. Trayvon Mix. He dials it up his first of the night. And it's 61-59. This is fun right now here at the Fieldhouse. Ellis trying to work through Broberg. Can't do it back up top to Borchers. Padani, now Borchers again. Going to take Adam Broberg one-on-one. -on -one. Can't finish. Up for grabs. Ball's loose. Who's got it? Nobody. It's Rodgers. Trayvon Mix trying to stay with it. A Beckway's going to get called for a hold. Wow, I love, I've just loved this type of basketball. Fast moving, good fundamentals, active hands, great defense, and a couple of threes. First trifecta. Well, after being cold most of the night from the outside, Rogers starting to hit a few from down there, and that's making a big difference in this game. Wagner now with nine on the night. Poole and Rogers. Watching some movement. There's Balder down below. He'll pass out of that. Mix trying to work in. Here comes the pressure. So Beckway tried to poke it away. Both teams really trying to jump in passing lanes. Big screen on Ellis, but he's going to get called for a moving screen, and that's a good call. Chase Balder doesn't like it, but he absolutely slid his hips on that screen and took out Dre Ellis. 
Second on Balder, and that's the fourth team foul for Rogers with 6.27 to go. Still that two point lead for Anoka. You just wonder if, if Rogers ties this up, if that's kind of a hit to switch time for them. Could be. Dre Ellis wants to drive and not let that happen, but he comes up short. Clearly, Ellis has the green light, though. He's firing. Oh, and that should be a call. It should be, oh, no. They call a block on Peyton Padani. I thought he was set. But no, referee says that's a block. And Padani called for the foul. Boy, I don't know. <laughs> that's about as straight up as you can be, I think. Unless they felt like he just moved a touch with his shoulder, which I could maybe see. First one good for Mix. Mix again averaging 11, but uh, it's common for us to see his numbers around 16, 17 a night for the junior. Just seven tonight, but 61-60. Ellis sits. Abekwe, Housey, Borchers, Padani, and Shearer on the floor. Oh, this has been this has been a great game. Watching both of these teams. Got to throw good. one punch after another. Knot it up at 61-61. Let's see who can kind of take to this challenge here. Well, just a six-minute basketball game now with these two. See who wins it. Drive, throw, nobody home on that one. Shearer, again, leaving your feet to pass. It's a risky proposition. That time didn't come up the way of the tornadoes. Kaj Murkowski with that pick. Good backdoor by Mix, but he can't hang on. Now he can, and a block by Peyton Padani. Great defensive play by Padani. <laughs> Sheer Borchers, three ball, no good. Rebound taken by Housie, who goes straight back up to Trey Borchers. Borchers, another look that time, no, but a block. Borchers, Kashmir, maybe not yeah. the hottest night for him. He's usually red hot from the outside tonight, a little cold, but getting it done other ways. He's got 10 points tonight. He's averaging 13. Each night here for him. He's second on the team in three pointers. He's made 43 pointers coming into the game, leading as Ellis with 42. Podani, though, has been heating it up thus far. He's got three trifectas for Anoka tonight. Coach Mike Pomeroy's body language is one of <laughs> just like he's been waiting in a doctor's office for three hours. 61 <laughs> 61. After 20, about 23 minutes of play. We're back to essentially a 0-0 tie. And we go, as you mentioned earlier, to the last six minutes of this game. On the watch, because you hope that the Tornadoes can take this momentum and this confidence in the postseason. As they can see what focus it takes and then what a commitment defensively it takes as well. And you start to see, like, one thing that I think Coach Jefferson I thought was interesting is, like, we're interested in defense this year. We just don't always execute. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I, I think that's a big change from the first couple of years here under Coach Jefferson is as he's been trying to get this program up and moving is getting that commitment on the defensive side. They've always been able to score. But tonight you're seeing an example of what can happen when you put both pieces together. And you know what? Anoka could be a very highly ranked team in this in this section. They've beaten Andover twice this season. They've beaten Blaine twice this season. I believe they split with Centennial. Um, but but uh, they're going to probably get a halfway decent seat as they head into it early. Well, the seedings will be probably kicked out on Saturday. Well, the way, these, the way this team plays, it's not a team that you really want to play in the playoffs. That's one if they get like a five seed and you're the four, you're like, ah, oh, man, that's a tough out. But the thing I've been most impressed with with Anoka is they have been knocked down. They've gotten back up. They've been down in this game a series of times, and then they've taken the lead. His eyes seven points here in the second half, and they keep battling and regain the lead here on the free throw by Borchers. Borchers up to 11 points. Hasn't made a three tonight, which is usually his bread and butter. Correct, 40 on the season for him. Ooh, Deluge loses the basketball. He's in trouble here if he picks it up. Abekwe not trying to reach. Deluge escapes it, gets it out to Balder. Deluge wants three. Good pursuit by Padani. Off the mark and a great rebound by Caleb Shearer. And a reach-in foul by Chase Balder. And that's kind of a, I think, a frustration foul. Maybe not, and that's definitely not a good one from Chase Balder. But what you see from Rodgers is not allowing the teams just to get the rebound and work it up. They challenge that, or they at least try to disrupt the progress of moving it down on a fast break, fast break transition run. 
Hurst, we haven't seen it a little bit uh, in this game. He had a long sit. Wouldn't be surprised if they look to have him go the rest of the way. Correct. He has 10 points tonight. Sure. Going to take it. Son Avenue drove, kicked it back out. Padani, dangerous pass, got away with it. Now Shearer in the corner. Looks for JR to move. JR gets it on a backdoor cut. Finds Housie on another backdoor cut. AJ goes straight up and scores. That's three buckets the second half on a baseline move by Housie. And Housie doesn't exactly have range. That's where he scores. It's like right there. To the basket, Housie gets a swat on the backboard, but Balder able to put it away. Chase Balder up to eight points, his first of the second half. Yeah, the key there too is that Mix was able to get to the lane and Doss went off the glass. Oh man, a near turnover. They got away with it. And that one's knocked out of bounds by Trayvon Mix. One point lead, 64, 63. Tornadoes averaging 73 points a game this season. They've surrendered 77 a game to their opponents. Housie gets the high screen, or wants it for Padani, but then backs off. Now Peyton goes right through it. Thought about giving it to Hurst. Now goes back out to JR. Hurst will put it on the floor, goes left hand. Trying to turn and spin. Now will turn around jumper, can't knock that down. Chance here for Rogers to reclaim the lead. It's been quite some time. Mix. Kazmarkowski inside feed Balder, nice cut. Deluge puts it in. 10 points for Blake Deluge and the first lead for Rogers in a little bit. Padani trying to quickly answer, can't do it. Rebound Jackson Fuller. We're running full headed steam for Kazmer Koski. He goes right through the defense and scores. 16 on the night for him, converting on the fast break. See if there'll be a timeout here by Anoka with 3.15 to play. They trail now by three. Driving in, Shearer, the oh, that little teardrop. Oh, beautiful. The teardrop for Caleb Shearer, and that's a big basket. Brought down a little of the cumulus clouds with that teardrop floater. And Pong, Coach Pomeroy will take a timeout right here. He'll take a full timeout. 67-66 Rogers with 3.05 to go. Yeah, hey, Podani hasn't taken a shot lately. You haven't seen the component, but each player kind of steps up. You're seeing on the baseline, Housie, who had six at half. And uh, he's continued to grow and get it. He's got 12 for the game, six here in the second half as well, all from baseline. So uh, different players, and including that last one by Scherer, who had a beautiful floater. You wonder if this game, it's just about matchups, but I haven't seen a lot of Evan Frecking tonight. Other than the start of the game, he got in early in the second half, but we haven't seen a lot of him here in this second half of this game. And you just wonder if, they're, if Coach Jefferson is not just playing hot hands per se, but also like looking at the matchups and looking where he's going to try to be advantage and looks like he wants to play more athletic small ball. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, uh, Frecking came in uh, leading the team in rebounds, averaging uh, almost seven a game along with it. But uh, it, it, I'm, I'm surprised too. That was a good point. Had not uh, noticed that here in the second half, but Frecking usually a, a pretty good presence on this team. So making those adjustments and hey, that's what coaches Sub do. And subsequently, we haven't seen Alex Kane in a while. On the other side for Rodgers. You, you know, when I thought of that, I thought of that when I saw the rebound by Balder. He got got it down to the post, got a rebound, and he was looking the same way Kane would look to dish it down. Housie steps up on mix, cross court feed Deluge. Inside Balder. Nice cut. Jackson Fuller can't finish, but a good putback. No! And it's up for grabs, and Balder rips it away from Housie. Three ball Deluge. Cash. 70-66 as Blake Deluge has again come alive with his third three of the night, and he's got 13. That's good. big. Hey, but good, good board work underneath. There's a case where you could have probably used fracking as Balder came away with a couple of rebounds. Inside, it's, oh man, swatted as Borchers tried to go past Balder but couldn't do it. And in comes Ellis again as her sits out. Look at this. Good hands. Didn't foul. So he's going again to stay with shooters, really. He's got Shearer, Padani. The only shooter he doesn't have is Housie. Housie slips and falls. Trey's got to protect. And he does draw the foul. And he got poked in the eye, I think, too. 
Good hustle by Dre Ellis, but the body foul. Yeah, I'll tell you, Mix comes in there with some pretty good velocity and a little bit of altitude. So you give up size with this lineup if you're the Tornadoes. I think it's a shooter's lineup. You got guys who can make threes with the exception of Housie, who's more the inside guy. But interesting to see this matchup from Coach Jefferson. First one's good. Trayvon Mix, or no, take that back, it's Deluge. No, take that back, yeah, it was, was Mix. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw Deluge step to the line. I'm like, did I just misread, but I, I thought I was seeing the same thing. But you're starting to see some of those primetime players for Rodgers come alive, including right. Deluge. Deluge up to 13. If Mix makes this, he's got 10. So 10 for Trayvon Mix. Kashmir with, uh, Kashmir Koski with 16. Nowhere for Padani to go, and that's a, boy, that's a contested Tuffle, shot, 18. but a big one. Beautiful shot. Oh. I mean it. He hits from all levels. Yeah, Padani, 18 tonight. He's played well. That was a contested shot, though. I think if you're Rodgers, you'll live with it. 72-68, a buck 45 to play. Rodgers looking for a dagger. Can Balder give it to him? Got Housie up in the air and put it down. Nice job by Chase Balder. He's up to 10 points. Boy, what poise. You have that defender right on your hip. Fake the shot. Padani, a quick three. No good. That was a rush shot. And now Rodgers smells it. Five three-pointers on the night for Anoka, a team that has put up 169 coming into tonight. Three-pointer makes. Definitely Deluge looking for a dagger for Rodgers here. Up by six, coming up on a minute to go. They got 18 to shoot. They've got time. Drive there, take in by Mix, and he'll draw the foul. Mix just, he's got such explosive speed. He's on the baseline. He could see that he had that opening and defensively the footing wasn't there. And he just took to the rim here and drew the foul, 104 to go. Yeah, the rush shot there. I didn't think you had to hustle that three if you were Padani. Might have been able to take your time and get something set. Mix makes the first free throw. He's got 11. And there's the balance. You got five guys in double figures, just like that. Boy, you got to give a lot of credit to Rodgers. I mean, Minoka really took it to him in this game. And it was a fight. And Rodgers looks like right now they're just going to outlast this Tornado team. When you play at this level every night, your cardio system, your mindset, it all gets really uh, prepared for that. And uh, when it comes down to those last five minutes, that's the difference maker. Ellis can't finish right there. Rebound Housie, no good. So he couldn't put it back. And now Rodgers looks to ice it. And Mix, oh, Padani just lets him go. And there's a late foul. Trayvon wants a piece of somebody, which we can't have that. I think we're going to give some technical fouls out. Flagrant foul called on Anoka. Oh, Sheer that time just came over and just yep. can't do right it. push. Yeah, can't do it. But Andy looked like he kind of gave up on the play, which I didn't understand. And then you get the foul called on top of that, the intentional, which irritated Trayvon Mix, and now everything's a little hot. Yeah, I think Balder came up. Yep, so they're gonna, retaliated a bit. Yep, gonna clean things up here a bit. The referees have to in the final 40 seconds. And Mix will make the first. Trayvon Mix has really been the difference maker, making uh, free throws here at the end, and we're still heated. And I I'm think we gotta sure. start sending some people out of here. I'm not sure if it was sure who thought maybe he needed to make a, a flight and foul just to draw that, but that push. Tough. And if you're Rodgers right now, you got to settle down here. You got to lead. What are you doing? You can't give extra fouls here to Anoka as Caleb Shear and Blake Deluge are going back and forth. Yeah. And Coach Jefferson's not happy about something as well. But you also have to keep in mind your next game yes. is going to be postseason. Composure is everything here at the end. If and what are we going to get for a final decision here? for any ejections. Or yes, you can't afford to get run here. And if you're, if you're both coaches, I think you need to reset this. And that's what exactly, you can see Anoka's assistant coach is doing that right now. Trying to calm down the Anoka Tornadoes. And again, it's been a hotly contested basketball game. 
These two teams have gotten after each other. Mix now with 14. He only had two in that first half. So 78-68. Coach Pomeroy looking to figure out. Now we get Tex on the other side as Ellis will shoot technical free throws and make one. Just kind of a weird finish to what's been a was a, a great game, a great basketball game with these two teams. Tie game at until 538 remaining. And Dre wants to calm down the crowd here. And Dre's telling the crowd to be quiet here on the other side, but I don't understand that. I think that's a score. Oh boy, I think we gotta maybe start throwing some some people out maybe here. As the fans are both sides giving the business to each other here. Yeah, yeah. I, some of them, just some of them adults, some of them adults, which isn't very good either. I mean, I would always say if you're an adult and you're picking on with and you're battling the student section, I don't recommend that. No, it's not a good look. Not a good look. We got to be a little, got to be a little smarter about all that. You can see Mix came up and talked to. You. Put Danny just to say, hey, man. Let's just play ball here in exactly. the final 40 seconds. And that's what you want to see. Take that. Absolutely. Stay above the line. Farah fires a long three. Can't finish. And the Rodgers crowd leans on Farah. And we get a foul, I think, 30 from Coach Pomeroy. And I think it's just about, hey, can we all just settle down a minute? I would also want to just get my starters out. Yeah, I want to get them out of the game. Exactly. Don't take any chances at this point. And I think Coach Jefferson's doing the same thing. Well, if you're Rodgers right now, potentially a number one seed, and I'm not sure how that section works, but if you sometimes you end up playing your first game and it's a semifinal, you don't want you want all your players playing, and it does them no good to finish this game out here. 27 seconds left. Whatever else could happen, you hate to see anything prevent any one of these teams have any players not play in that first round of sections even though it's a tornadoes with one more game left tomorrow against Coon Rapids so we continue calmer heads let's hope prevail hopefully so we do have some parents continuing to jab at the Anoka student section which again is utter nonsense in my opinion but foul on Farah. Good fight tonight, though. What a heck of a basketball game with these two teams. Yeah. It, it's a shame it kind of ended in this last minute the way it did, but for, for 35 minutes, this was about as fun a basketball game as, as we had seen really all season on QCTV. Two teams that really got after each other. They battled up and down the floor. Great balance scoring from both sides. Padani, 18 points. Kaz Murkowski, 16, leading the way. And um, it was just a really fun basketball game. What I like about Anoka, they didn't fade. Uh, yeah. They were up early, 7-2, 9-4. Rodgers came back. They took a lead, 5-6. But usually Rodgers will score's put so much pressure on that, that just the teams kind of almost surrender. Yeah, score's not going to resemble this, but it was a good defensive game by Anoka, I thought, for the most part. And now I think Mix will hold on to this thing and put it to put it to bed for the Rodgers Royals. They get a nice win on the road. This was a tough fight. They were in it with the Anoka Tornadoes tonight. But it's going to be a win for the Rogers Royals. Rogers gets the win, 80 to 70. 80 to 70 tonight. Good job by Rogers getting a big win on the road, knowing they were going to be tested, and it was a hotly contested game. Yeah, but I think Anoka found out a lot about this team, about themselves at the right time, right? And if they see if we can play at that level of defense when we come section play, we can own it. We can we can own our uh, performance, and uh, I thought they I think this was a great discovery game for this team, as you said. Uh, head coach Jesse said, "Hey, sometimes they don't always want to play defense. Tonight they did, and they saw what a game changer it can be." Yeah, it was a good one tonight. It was a lot of fun to watch. We hope you enjoyed it here on QC TV. I know that I enjoyed it. My thanks to Mike and the truck, Mark in the truck tonight. Mark did a great job. Didn't have to give him too hard a time tonight. He did a great job. Our crew, as always, Ryan. Uh, Dan, Dan, everybody that we have on the crew tonight. I wish I could get everybody's name. I got to get that written down at some point. A lot, of, a lot of good work tonight being done by our crew here at QCTV. We hope you enjoyed it. 
uh, as you always do here. Joe, my pleasure. Thank you, my friend. You as well, Tim. Thank you. For Joe Rulin, this is Tim Anderson saying keep your head up, and we'll see you next time.